Hello, everyone, and welcome to Experience Matters, the ultimate guide to gaining the experience. This is a new workshop from our team, and we are really excited to share this information with you. So thanks so much for taking time out of your day to join us. My name is Dorothy Baumgartner, and I'm a career advisor here at WGU with the Career and Professional Development Team, and my colleague Christy Graham is monitoring the chat, but I'm really excited to let our uh, newer colleague introduce herself. Addison? Thank you, Dorothy. My name is Addison Welsh, and I am the Internship and Experiential Learning Manager here at WGU. And I'm so looking forward to this presentation. As I was going through it, I thought about all the ways that experiential learning has really impacted my own career. And so I'm hoping that it also has a great impact for you. Thanks, Addison. We're going to do a couple quick housekeeping things and then we'll jump in. First of all, um, we recognize that everybody has different learning styles and things going on in their lives. So please do what you need to do. If you need to stand up and stretch or walk away, feel free to do that. Or if, you, if you're pulled away to take care of something, um, rest assured, as you heard, we are recording this workshop and we'll be, re, uh, we'll be sending that link out to you in a follow-up email within about 24 hours. Um, hopefully, maybe later today, so you will be able to get all of this content. So take care of what you need to, but I do want to encourage you to make note of this email address here, careers at wgu.edu. That's our team email, and that's a great way to get in touch with us, especially if you have to step away and you have a question, or if you think of something later today um, that, you, that we didn't cover or that you didn't um, remember to ask. That's another way to get um, in touch with us. So we will, though, be monitoring the chat today. So feel free to put questions in there. Christy's going to be um, anchoring that for us. And um, but I do want to make a note that we are not using the Q and A panel today. We're not watching that. So please use the chat instead of that panel if you've got questions. All right. And with that, um, we're going to just take a quick look. Our agenda is very simple. We are looking at all kinds of uh, gaining experience opportunities. And the first chunk is going to be about internships. We'll be walking through different types of internships, the benefits of completing one, how you can find opportunities to get them, when do you want to be thinking about doing an internship during your program, and how to be successful as an intern. And then we'll pivot to be uh, to discussing some variety of other experiential learning opportunities and the benefits of each one of those. And we'll also highlight some places, uh, some great resources where you can find those opportunities. So, and um, even though we're doing questions uh, all the way through, hopefully we'll have some additional time at the end. And that's really the arc of our um, of our time together today. So let's jump in with those internships. All right, yep, so to begin our exploration of experiential learning, we are going to start with internships. And so what is an internship? Uh, an internship is a professional learning experience that is really in line with your academic or career interests. And the main focus of it is skill development. And so when we think about, next slide, what is our, oh, what the benefits are of an internship? And so there are so many. Um, one of the first is just gaining that skill set, like I said, developing skills, knowledge, and experience so that you can add that to your resume and LinkedIn um, so that you can land that next job that you're after. Uh, the other really great thing is networking, being able to network with other professionals within that industry so that you can continue to learn and grow. You'll be able to apply your knowledge from both WGU as well as your previous professional experiences and solidify your career path. Um, some of you may complete an internship and you're not totally sure if that's the path that you want to take. And internships are a great way to really understand whether that's the way that you want to go. And finally, and I think this is probably one that's most exciting, is that sometimes those internships can transition into a full-time role as well. So we often get asked, should I complete an internship? And I'm a little bit biased because I would say, absolutely. Um, but just some stats here to, to hopefully encourage you as well. So 85% of internships actually lead to a full-time role where employers are offering uh, the intern a full-time position within that company. And in 2023, there were over 4.1 million internships available. Um, and within that, we also had almost 900 internships posted on Handshake, which you have available to you as a WGU student. And 57% of the internships last year were paid. And that number is continuing to increase um, especially as NACE and other industries really start to promote that paid internships are the way to go. And so, yes, I just, Dorothy. sorry, I want to jump in, Addison. NACE is an acronym for an organization called um, 
um, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, and it's kind of the flagship organizations that colleges and universities use to partner with employers. And so we get a lot of research. That's where a lot of these stats come from. And um, we're, you know, we, they're big advocates for our work. So that's what Addison was referring to. Thank you, Dorothy. Yes, these are not just things that I made up on my own. <laughs> <laughs> and so when, you know, who can benefit from completing an internship? Again, I would say anyone, um, but for those that are beginning their career, it's going to be really helpful because you're going to be able to gain that experience and skill set so that you can begin to apply for jobs when you complete your degree. For folks that might be changing, let's say you have a job in IT and you want to move into HR, this is really going to help you not only gain experience within that certain field, the new field that you want to move into, um, but also, you know, network and start to, to meet other people that are in that industry so you can hopefully um, find a full-time role. And then finally, the career curious is a mouthful for me for some reason. These are folks I feel like I have landed in this, in this spot many times myself where you're just not entirely certain as to what you want to do. Um, and so truly at any time, you know, completing that internship is going to be really beneficial for you. And so what types of internships are available? Um, you have your traditional internship, and typically these are internships that last a few months. We also have micro internships, and we're going to chat through those here in just a minute. And those are usually really short-term projects that you can complete within a few weeks. Uh, virtual and international internships. Virtual internship you complete uh, in the privacy and comfort of your own home. And then international internships where you potentially might actually go overseas and intern with a, an international company, or you might actually do a virtual internship and then work with an international company um, while you're working at home. And then on-site, obviously that's gonna be, you know, within the office of that specific employer and then paid and unpaid. I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, always, always better to get paid though for that experience. Yes, please go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Um, and so micro internships with Parker Dewey. So this is a great company. Um, Jeffrey Moss, who is the founder of this company, recognized that there was really a gap within the industry and that a lot of employers were saying that graduates didn't quite have the skill set in order to do well in their organization but a lot of the students felt that they didn't have the opportunity to gain those skills so here comes parker dewey so the idea behind it is that these are short-term projects typically they're anywhere between 10 and 40 hours total um, they are paid and they're also virtual and they are across a variety of industries whether that's marketing data analytics cybersecurity, and everything in between and you really get to gain skills for that specific industry as well as experience. I will say um, just a couple pointers on this. Um, when you are applying to Parker Dewey, they are posting projects literally every single day and some are only available for a couple hours at a time. And so if this is something that you really want to do, make sure that you're checking back often. Uh, I would also say in speaking with Parker Dewey, typically a student isn't selected for a project until they usually apply for about five to 10 different projects. So if you only apply for maybe one or two projects and you're not selected, please don't give up hope. Just keep trying and make sure that that application is completed in full. Great. I want to pop in again. Sorry, Addison. I just want to make Please. a note that Christy did drop the URL into the chat, and so you can grab that. And on that note, uh, we will be sharing a lot of resources with you today. So if you want to open up a Word doc, uh, for example, and copy and paste those, you can do that. We will also, you'll get the recording, so you'll see these in the recording. And I will also be sending out a follow-up email after the recording is done and I will include these links there. So there's several ways to get it, but just be, be aware there's a lot of links coming in the chat if you wanna be prepared to grab those. Thank you, Dorothy, yes. It's about to get intense, I guess. <laughs> and so in terms of finding an internship, we get asked this question quite a bit. Um, so I am in the process of finalizing a guide that will help walk you through where to find different internship opportunities. And so that will be available on the CPD website um, here within a few weeks. And I also intend to email it to all of you as well for those that signed up for this um, webinar. Also, Handshake is a really great place. Like I said, you know, as a WGU student, you have access to that platform. So be sure to check out Handshake. LinkedIn and Indeed are two other resources, um, and you can actually, you can filter them by virtual as well as on site, and you can do them from a specific location. There are a lot of internship search engines too, which will be highlighted in that guide that I will be sharing out. Another opportunity I think that students often aren't aware of is that your current employer may also provide you with an opportunity to intern. And so how that would look, let's say for instance, I'm studying HR and I um, am currently in the accounting department. 
Um, and if your employer will allow you that opportunity to intern with the HR department for maybe 10 hours a week, that's going to really help you develop skills within that specific industry. And so don't forget that, that you know, your current employer, if they happen to have a department in the area where you want to gain more experience, that could be an excellent opportunity for you. And finally, your network. I feel like this is one that's often overlooked. And so, you know, whether it's your friends, your family, your favorite barista at Starbucks, if you happen to mention, I'm looking for an internship in this industry, and this is what I'm hoping to do, you never know where that might lead. And so be sure to post it on LinkedIn um, and just share with your network that those are the types of opportunities that you're looking for. And so when should I complete an internship? Um, again, this is another question we get asked a lot. And so um, I kind of went over this a little bit before, but if you are just starting your career and you are looking and your main goal is really to gain experience, it's likely going to be most beneficial towards the end of your program. And the reason being is that you may be transitioning into a full-time role post-internship. If you are okay completing your degree as well as working and doing an internship at the same time, you could do it at any time. Um, but it really, again, it just depends on your goals. And then for those that are changing careers, oftentimes you already have the professional experience. You may just not have that experience in that specific industry. And so I think the biggest question I would ask is when you want to move into that industry. And so that could be at any point in your program. I know some programs you have to complete, for instance, um, School of Education. Um, you can't start teaching until you have your certification. And so obviously you would have to wait. Um, but for some some, uh, excuse me, some industries, you'll be able to complete that internship at any time. And so it's just really when it when it works best for you um, and, and your academic program. And then finally, going back to that career curious, for some reason I can't, it's a mouthful for me. Um, if you need to identify and solidify your career path, um, this is truly, it's best to do this towards the beginning in the middle of your program. Um, and the reason being is that if, let's say for instance, you I really wanna be in accounting and then you go and complete an accounting internship, and you think, oh my goodness, this is not the path I want to take, you have the opportunity to go back and change your major. I will tell you just a, a personal anecdote here. I was, um, during my undergraduate career, I had the opportunity to do an internship. It was my senior year. I was about to graduate in two months, and I had the trajectory of political science and then go to law school and you know maybe become a politician. I'm not quite sure who, who wants to do that anymore. Uh, and I remember sitting there at the desk at my internship. I was at the state legislator thinking, oh my goodness, what have I done? This is not the path I wanna take. And so I really wish I would have done that internship earlier in my program because I would have been able to go back and change it. So just something to keep in mind. All right, grab a little drink here. How can you make the most of your internship experience? So this is really important. You really wanna make sure that you are there to gain skills, to excel in your career path. And so setting expectations with the employer, one moment, Setting the expectations with the employer about what you want to gain from the internship is going to be really important. So if there are certain, I want to learn project management skills, be sure to share that with them. It's also going to be really important to be professional, whether that's the way in which you dress, the way in which you show up, or the way, even if it's a remote internship, it's still really important to be professional. Um, feedback is also going to be really important. Whether that's receiving feedback and taking that well and, and integrating that within your professional experience, but also asking for that feedback so that you can continue to learn and grow. And that goes in line with asking questions. If you're not sure about something, please ask. This is a learning experience. It's really important that you, you take the time to get some clarification, especially if you're not sure how to do something. And um, also having a positive attitude is going to be very important. That can have a big impact in terms of whether or not the, the company wants to bring you back for a full-time role. And so some other ways to also make the most of your internship experience, as you can see, there's lots of different ways here, is taking advantage of that opportunity to network. You are already in the industry with a lot of the professionals that have worked in that industry potentially for many years, so it's a great opportunity to learn from them. As going back to you know being professional, we also wanna treat this opportunity like a real job. So showing up on time, doing what is expected, meeting expectations or exceeding, we hope. Um, and that includes being flexible so that if the employer asks for something that may not be you know, part of your typical duties, be sure to jump in, ask questions if you need support, but being flexible and, or, and supporting them in what they need is gonna be really crucial to your success. Um, finding a mentor is also gonna be very, very helpful because that mentor can help you learn a little bit more about the industry as well as the organization and so be sure if you have that opportunity to find a mentor, that person could be not only helpful during your internship, but also your entire career. 
And then finally, and this is the one that, you know, is a little tough, is challenging yourself. Um, again, like I said, this is a learning experience. So if you have the opportunity to learn a skill that maybe you weren't previously, you haven't previously done, um, take advantage of that. You know, you have the support and they know that you're there to learn. All right. And so, my goodness, you're ready to find an internship. What is next? So as I talked about, we really want to make sure that you're identifying those goals to really get the most out of your internship and to have a fulfilling experience. You need to identify, you know, are there certain skills you want to develop? Is there a certain industry you want to intern in? Is there a certain company you'd like to intern in? What do you want to happen at the end of the internship? Is it just about gaining experience or is it potentially about working long term with that organization? All of those types of questions are going to help you find an internship that best meets your goals. Next, you're going to want to update your resume, LinkedIn, cover letter, all of those really, really fun things, and also potentially uh, spruce up your intern or your interview skills because some internships do require an interview. And if you need support with that, we have such a wonderful team of career advisors that can help you with all of those elements. And once you have those documents all prepared, you're going to start searching for internships. Like I said, we kind of talked through some of the ways that you can find an internship, and I'll soon be sending a guide with some more resources. And that also includes making sure that your network is aware that you want to find an internship. And so once you identify some of those internship opportunities, you're going to want to start to apply for them, and then hopefully you will be able to accept that and make sure that you include that on your resume as well as your LinkedIn. And so with that, I think I hand it back to you, Dorothy. Yes. However, um, before we jump into the next segment, I, I just saw a bunch of questions popping into the chat. So I'm wondering if we yes. should take a minute here and take a That's look. Great. And before we answer those specifically, um, Addison, I'm going to give you a chance to read those um, and take a look at them. While she's doing that, I just want to mention for those of you that came in a few minutes after we got started, uh, we are monitoring the chat today, not the Q&A panel, so please do uh, put your questions in the chat. And we are recording this session and we'll be sending it out with all of the links that we're sharing today. So you can look forward to that in your inbox later today or sometime tomorrow. So, Addison, you want to take a crack at some of those questions? Yes. So, uh, Christian and Christy, I think, Christy, you answered that exactly how I would. I think that just trying as many different things, you know, get into different industries and see, you know, what career interests do you already have? And I think that some of our career advisors can help you identify some of those. And then going through and, and just trying out some of those internships and seeing what do you like, but even sometimes more importantly, what don't you like? Um, and then Anessa, do you think a management trainee role is similar to an internship? I'm not sure what you mean by management trainee role, if you wanna share a little bit more there. It sounds kind of like this is almost like an apprenticeship, um, but to me, it sounds like it is definitely an experiential learning opportunity. Uh, because you are gaining experience as well as skills. Um, I would like to understand a little bit more about, are you trying to like put that on your resume? Like how can we best support you? Um, when is the best time to look into an internship for software engineering student with no experience, but just starting? Uh, I think that's a great question. It really depends. Um, I would say it's almost similar to when you want to apply for jobs. I would say about two to four months prior to your wanting to start that experience is a great time to really start looking. If you think that you can handle um, doing some software, a software engineering internship while you're completing your degree, that could also be helpful because sometimes not all internships are going to lead to a full time role. And um, I would also say we're going to go through some other experiential learning opportunities as well that could also support you um, as an IT student gaining some of those skills. Diana, yes. So, um, on, she says, um, it can take a whole day to optimize a resume and cover letter for a specific job. This is why I gave up on Parker Dewey's ultra short-term short jobs. By the time I got ready to submit, the job was gone. This can sometimes happen. That is very, very true. Um, I know that they, Parker Dewey, and I can send some information as well, they do offer workshops where they can help you with your application as well as um, applying to certain jobs because they do oftentimes have short-term application questions and they can help you and provide you guidance so that you can be more successful in landing those micro internships. Um, and so I will be sure, um, Dorothy, when we send out the um, follow-up, we can send that information so that they can participate in that. Great. That's a great question. How do I go about finding, approaching a mentor? I think this is something, this is a this is a great question. I think that this is something too that happens organically. Um, I, I don't know if you think about some of your, the positions that you have had. Sometimes people are just more helpful. 
And when you find that someone is willing to go out of their way to provide you, you know, with help and answer your questions and are just simply very patient and encouraging, maybe take a moment and say, you know, you have been so helpful. I'm curious if you'd be able to support me in my career development, you know, whether that's through this internship specifically or, you know, long term. Dorothy, do you have anything to add on that? Because I know that this may be something that you chat about a little bit more as a career advisor. Um, we don't a lot actually get into that, but I think that's exactly the right approach because you want a mentor to really be someone that you're comfortable with and aligned with in terms of, you know, kind of priorities and values and career trajectory. So I think I agree with Addison. It is a pretty organic kind of thing. Identify, you know, start to pay attention to who you tend to gravitate toward for your questions when you're doing an internship or in your job or, you know, in other areas. Um, and I think that approach is great, you know, appreciative of their, their support so far. And, you know, it, you, you can either say, would you, you can keep it really informal and say, you know, would, would it be okay with you if I, you know, occasionally contact you for questions? Or you could say, make it more formal and say, you know, I'd really love to see if you'd be willing to serve as a mentor for me. And, but this is what it would look like. So I think it's helpful when you approach people, if you give them a more specific indication of what you're asking. So think through what do you want to get out of a mentorship and you might not know and they may be a person that you can explore that with. But, um, but if you just say, will you be my mentor, people may not know how to respond to that because they're not really sure what you're asking. Um, but I do affirm that it, the best people are the ones that you um, feel most aligned with. Excellent. Thank you, Dorothy. All right, just a few more here. Um, Yep, it looks like, um, Raphael, please apply for internships at any point. Um, and then also in terms of getting an internship post-graduation, oftentimes you'll see students and recent graduates. I truly think that, you know, as you, even if you have graduated, you can absolutely still find internships, especially if you already have professional uh, experience. All right. I will look at that one from Vanessa. Dorothy, I'll hand it back to you. I think we got through, got through all of those. Um, there's a couple oh, goodness, more. I got McKenna. Yes, I uh, did. Yeah. These are just coming in so yeah, quick. They're popping in, yeah. <laughs> I find a lot of internships. They want you to already have experience. Should you still try to apply to these and hope for the best? Maybe try to relate to coursework and experience. It can absolutely be disheartening, um, and you would love to start gaining real world experience. I completely understand. And so I do think that um, highlighting coursework, which is something that I know the career advisors chat through when they do resume reviews, and adding, you know, what are those skills and what are those components that you've gained that's going to help the employer. Um, McKenna, we're also going to chat through some other opportunities where you can gain experience and skills that are internships, but that you can add into your resume. And so hopefully that section is going to help you. Uh, and then Anessa, let's see, there are job posts I've looked for in the role as tighter management training. Um, I will work on Anessa's question, Dorothy. I'm going to hand it back to you just so we can stay on time. All right, sounds good. Thanks. All right, so some of your questions are, how do I get an internship when I don't have any experience? So this next section that we're going to be talking about might be helpful for you as a short-term first step in preparing for that. And that's around experiential learning opportunities. These are ways to gain experience other than internships. Usually, many of them are shorter um, and some of them are self-directed. And so hopefully this will give you some ideas about how to start to build some experience and, get, and add some of those credentials potentially to your application materials, which may help you then land a more formal kind of internship. So let's jump into what is this experiential learning thing. It's really the process of learning by doing. And you, what you're doing is you're applying theoretical concepts that you learned in the classroom in a hands-on real world environment. So um, uh, mostly real world, some of them are, are virtual and simulations. But think about if you've ever had an experience where someone was showing you how to do something um, and then you had a chance to actually do it yourself and you found that when you had that hands-on experience, you learned it that task more quickly. That's exactly what experiential learning is. Um, you're learning by doing and you're applying your knowledge. So there's a variety of ways to do that. And so we're going to go through some of the most common types and we'll just, I'll just let you look at this next slide. I'm not going to read those off. We're going to go through each one of these opportunities for experiential learning. We'll be talking about uh, what they are, how they can benefit you and highlight some, um, some resources about where you can find these kinds of opportunities. So let's jump into volunteering. What is it? 
You're donating your time and your effort, usually to a, a cause or an organization that you are invested in or care about, and it may often be in your community. So uh, what happens in this opportunity is not only are you using the skills that you already have, hopefully gaining some new ones, but you also have this added benefit of networking in person, probably most likely with people um, in your local community, or more broadly, if you're doing something virtually, um, so you're expanding your professional network as well as having this experiential learning opportunity. Plus you get to exercise some philanthropy. You are contributing to a, a cause that you care about. So there's a whole lot of benefits to volunteering. Uh, it's sometimes people get stuck when they think about, well, like, how do I do that? So we've got a list of um, organizations on this slide that you can look at. And again, um, we'll be sending those out. I think Christy's about to pop them in the chat for you. So you can also grab them there. So take a look at these to see if there's anything that interests you. And then also think locally. Um, sometimes we just forget about what's so familiar to us, right? So as you're going around your community, you know, are there schools? Uh, that you could volunteer or hospitals, maybe local libraries, if that's an interest for you. And then, of course, there are lots of community focused nonprofits like soup kitchens and, and meals on wheels and, you know, um, friends of friends is one of my community where people help people get to medical appointments. There's a whole lot of different things and you may not be doing a whole lot of, you know, industry specific kinds of things, but you are networking and potentially adding to your skill set and faith based organizations often are, are um, happy to have people um, help out with things. So be creative in the way you're thinking about places that you can volunteer because you get a whole lot of good things out of that. Again, the contribution you're you're um, working on building your skills and you're getting that added benefit of networking. Next, we're going to take a look at simulation. So what is that? This is an experience um, that it is basically a scenario that happens in a controlled kind of an environment to help prepare learners for real life situations. So some examples of simulations might be things like um, creating a sales pitch for a company or completing a tax audit or designing a marketing campaign. So it's going to be similar to the work that you would generally do if you were an employee for that particular company or in within that industry. Um, they allow you, doing this. these kinds of simulations can allow you to utilize skills that you already have, develop new skills, stretch your skills a little bit in a very controlled environment. And the great thing about this is it, you know, it's a great space to make mistakes to learn in a really low risk setting. There's very little downside um, to simulation. So you can play around with things and, oops, excuse me, my mouse jumped there, pardon me. Um, so, so what are you doing in, in a, a simulation, gaining and utilizing the skill sets you already have, experimenting with new, new skill sets. You can also explore um, whether a skill set that you have really, or, or you think you want really meets your career goals and desires or needs. And it's a pretty low level of commitment. These are usually um, short, very short things um, requiring kind of a few hours to complete in general. So, and then there are additionally um, some benefits. There are some uh, platforms like Forge, which I'm going to talk about on the next slide, which can offer you certificates that you can, add, or, you know, the statements of <clears throat> credential, excuse me, the language that you can use on your resume or your LinkedIn. So this is a great way to get a short-term kind of an experience um, and add that to your resume and LinkedIn, and which might help you then as you are applying for internships because you are demonstrating that you do have some um, experience and skill in it. So here's um, some organizations, some sites that you may wanna look at for simulation opportunities. Uh, Forage is a company that we at WG have a partnership with and um, Forage, uh, recognized that there were a lot of people going into the workforce that weren't equipped for it. So they partnered with a lot of companies across the United States and their well-known companies on a quite a broad variety of industry and topics. Um, so this is a great site to explore. Um, and the kind of companies that we're talking about are places like JP Morgan Chase, Lululemon, Fidelity, Accenture, Walmart, Red Bull, Lyft, PwC, Hewlett Packard, PepsiCo, GE, Cognizant, MasterCard, Pfizer. I mean, I'll, and there's a lot more. So it's, you know, well worth checking. And there's some great advantages to doing that work because that um, can help uh, um, 
uh, create greater visibility for you, especially if you're interested in that particular company. And these are really short simulations. So I wanted to pitch that in particular. We did have a Forge representative here recently that it did a workshop with Addison and Christy just popped a link to that recording in the chat. And I would really recommend that you take a, a look at that. This is a great way you could start tonight to gain some experience um, and add to your skill set and your credentials. Just a quick note on these other two that are listed here, edX is a, a site that has courses that you can take on a broad variety of topics, many of them free. It's, it's you know, quite broad um, topics, so it's worth checking that out. And MindSumo is a little bit different um, in, than, than some of these other simulations, but it is kind of a creative way to sort of stretch your thinking and participate in, in some things um, that might help you exercise some skills. So they do things like they'll, they are essentially allowing companies to crowdsource solutions to a challenge that they're trying to solve. So for example, recently Hidden Valley Ranch challenged participants to identify a new dipping sauce that includes ranch in some way. So while it's not a you know, great deal of hands-on experience, it is a, a creative and opportunity to think through you know, what would be a popular um, popular kind of solution to this. The thing about this is the participant that identified that new dipping sauce that Hidden Valley Ranch was interested in won $1,600. So it's a pretty short term way to have some fun and maybe uh, gain some resource. So you can get some more information on edX, um, on edX and MindSumo from their websites. All right, Dorothy, so gonna, you could eat a lot of ranch, which sounds yeah, fabulous. You, you could, yeah, t test a lot of different things for sure. So there's lots of benefits to doing some of those. So go take a go take a look to see if there's anything that looks fun and interesting for you. All right, we're going to switch to apprenticeships, and Addison's going to take this one. Yes, thank you so much, Dorothy. So an apprenticeship is basically training for a specific trade or profession. And so oftentimes when we think about apprenticeships, that's usually you know welding, plumbing, electricians music instrument repair. There are so many different types of apprenticeships available, and this is actually something that we're starting to see grow across industries. And so in terms of the benefits, this is everything from usually it leads to a full-time role within that industry. That's paid, which is fabulous. You're also going to gain industry-specific skills and also identify it if it is a good career fit for you while you're completing that apprenticeship. And so to find these types of opportunities, uh, college recruiter and apprenticeship.gov are two, they're almost like search engines where you can go and find apprenticeships based off of specific industries. Um, also technical college trade and labor reunions, I would check out local opportunities through them because they often partner with different org organizations and industries that offer apprenticeships. Um, I actually just learned about an uh, apprenticeship company that helps people who are interested in sales. And so I need to do a little deep dive on that and provide you all with some more information as well. And next up, we have study abroad. This is actually something that is near and dear to my heart. And it's probably out of all the experiential learning opportunities I participated in, uh, the one that impacted my career the most. And so studying abroad is an opportunity to study at an academic institution overseas. In terms of benefits, I could probably list off 12 million, but for sake of time here, we're gonna just talk about a few. Uh, language proficiency, especially if the language that you're speaking while you're living in that country is different from that of your first language. Uh, intercultural competency and being able to interact with people who are from cultures, races, and ethnicities, religions that are different from your own. Typically during studying abroad, uh, you earn academic credit that is going to be counted towards your major and then soft skill development. This is probably the biggest piece um, in terms of the benefits of study abroad, everything from critical thinking to problem solving, communication, self-reliance. There were many instances I got myself in some interesting scenarios where I did not speak the language, but had to find my way out of it. And so learn a lot in those experiences. Uh, to find these opportunities, there are lots of different ways. And so the top three here, goabroad.com, educations.com, and gooverseas.com are all search engines where you can put in your major, how long you want to go, and find a different, a variety of different programs that will offer you the opportunity to study abroad. And then there are third-party providers. I know this looks like alphabet soup here. Uh, you can Google even study abroad programs and, and all of these different providers will come up. Um, but basically what they do is that they're going to provide you with a little bit more logistical support. Um, so typically they'll offer you support in finding housing. They'll do an um, on-site orientation when you arrive in country and different things throughout and then support when you come home as well and then ensure that your credits do transfer. 
And then if you just say, nope, I don't need that logistical support. I really want to direct enroll. So similar to how you applied at WGU, let's say you're really interested in going to Scotland, you could direct enroll with the University of Edinburgh uh, and then just enroll in courses and, and begin your time there. And so uh, really great opportunity there. And so for students that aren't able to study abroad, virtual study abroad may be another really great opportunity. Um, this is actually something that really came from the pandemic. It wasn't something that was very common prior to COVID. Um, and so virtual study abroad is completed online. Usually you have international instructors. And so maybe you'll be sitting in the comfort of your own home in Seattle and have it taking a class with someone who is in France. Um, typically after those, those courses, you have the opportunity to complete either an internship or go on site to that country. You don't have to if you don't want to, um, but there usually is that type of opportunity available. And so when it comes to the benefits of virtual study abroad, it's very cost effective. It's going to be substantially less uh, than study abroad. Uh, you're also going to get that international experience without having to go abroad, um, without having to worry about where am I going to live, flights, all of those types of things. Uh, and again, same thing is that that soft skill development is going to be really evident. So whether that's communication, critical thinking, problem solving, intercultural competency, language proficiency, lots and lots of benefits there. To find a virtual study abroad option, um, gooverseas.com also offers um, a search engine, if you will. And then the next three, Academic Programs International, ISEP and AIFS, they all have just different types of virtual opportunities. And then I also did include um, some international internships, different companies that offer those. I do wanna give the caveat that oftentimes you're not going to get paid for this internship experience you usually do have to pay for it. Um, and sometimes though, you can get academic credit. And I think next we've got up service learning. And so service learning is the opportunity to apply theoretical knowledge that you have gained in your coursework and really reflecting on how that theoretical knowledge can apply in a real life scenario through a community service opportunity. Um, and so oftentimes you see these usually like in your social science courses, social work courses, and the benefits include really being able to contribute to a civic responsibility and being able to contribute to your local community. Um, application of your coursework. I know sometimes when I was studying, there were theories that I learned, but when I actually saw them play out, it would look very, very different. And so you actually get to apply those theories that you learn in the classroom in an actual environment. You do get to gain experience through this um, as you are actively participating in the community. And you also have the opportunity to network with people in that industry. So to find service learning intern, or excuse me, internships, it's always on my mind. Uh, to find service learning opportunities, uh, the US Department of Education has a search engine where you can go and find different opportunities and they have a, a wide variety available. Um, ISA does a service learning opportunity abroad. They are the only company I know of that offers that. And then also, as I said, sometimes this is also gonna be available through your coursework. And last but certainly not least, we have fellowships. Uh, and so fellowships are typically going to be a research opportunity that has an academic focus that you get to select. These are usually completed at the graduate level. Um, and so if you are interested in a career in research, this would be a really excellent opportunity for you. You're really going to gain those research skills. Usually these are funded and sometimes you can get a small stipend associated with it, depending on the fellowship. You're going to expand your network and meet so many other people within that research industry and also have the opportunity to have a mentor with the faculty that's going to be supporting you in your research. And so to find these types of opportunities, um, there are these three websites. I was actually very impressed. There are so many different types of fellowships, uh, whether it is based off of the location you are or the area that you want to research, all sorts of different things. And so if this is something that you are interested in, um, definitely check out these three websites. There are lots and lots of opportunities available for research. That's a great question, Anessa. Um, I just happen to look over. Are fellowships usually remote? Typically, it, it really, I think it really depends on, on the academic subject that you are studying. For instance, when it comes to like biology and chemistry and those types of things that I have absolutely no knowledge of, usually you're going to do those on site, especially when it comes like in the medical field. There are some, but usually they're going to be on site. Love that. All right. And so when, you know, we talked about when to do an internship, when should you do an experiential learning opportunity? And so, so I think this really depends on you uh, and what your goals are. And so, for instance, if you're a career beginner or career curious and you're not really sure what you want to do or you really want to solidify that that's the path that you want to take, I would say the sooner the better. 
uh, it never hurts to get that type of experience. And a lot of times these are opportunities that are not, they don't have a long obligation. And so you can complete them at any time. If you are getting ready, you're a career advancer. Again, it's gonna be any time that you have the, the ability, the time. I know that a lot of our students have a lot to juggle. And so it's when it works best for you. Um, Again, I, I would say any time that you can complete these opportunities, it is going to be so much value so that you can gain more experience and skills and also just make sure that that career path is indeed what, what you want to do. All right. Addison, there's a, a yes. question that I don't know the answer to, but back to fellowships. Are there yes. fellowships for things like finance, accounting, and business careers? You know, that's a great question. I do believe that there are in business. Jeremy, if you want to put your email address in the chat, I can, if you feel comfortable doing so, or you can send it to me directly. Um, I can follow up with you directly. Um, I know that, like I said, if you go to that fellowships website, you will be able to um, search by industry, but I don't remember off of the top of my head um, if they have those types of opportunities. I believe so, but I don't wanna make a guarantee. Excellent, thank you, Jeremy. All right, so next steps. I think that uh, research shows one of the most effective ways that we can make sure that we stick to our goals is both writing them down, whether you want to put that in your phone or actually take a physical pen and pen, pen and paper. I'm not sure if people still have those and write down what is one action step that you will commit to so that you can gain more experience. And if you want to come off mute or if you want to pop it in the chat, we would love to hear how you are going to work towards gaining more experience. I don't think folks can actually take themselves off of mute, but okay. please pop it in the in the chat. <laughs> I'm giving you options you can't have. Yes, I guess pop it in the chat. Yeah, thank you. I will say for myself, I'm always looking for for different ways to um, increase my career development and career coaching abilities. And I've recently started volunteering with an organization that helps veterans transition into civilian roles. And I will tell you that volunteering is such a powerful and impactful way. And it, there are so many studies that show that that it actually can really help um, with your happiness and fulfillment and, and your mental health. And so that is one way that I am continuing to gain experience and then help others within my community. That's awesome. The woman in Texas. All right, really we've great got job. time. Um, someone who shared with us volunteering with women in tech, that's a great one. Working in current work to start adding more experience under my belt with intent to transition on graduation. All right, that that's current great. workplace, current employer opportunity, that's great. I was just going to share that the, the action can be just as little as I'm going to, you know, maybe check out Forage or um, utilize one of the, the many links that we provided for you, but write it down so that, you know, you can follow through with it. Yeah, there is research that also shows that if you share that with other people, you're more likely to, to follow through with it. So for those of you brave enough to put in your chat, you're just helping yourself as much as maybe sparking some ideas for some other people. That's great. And I will say, just as we kind of wrap up here, um, this is really just the beginning of more resources that are be going to become available at WGU for experiential learning. Um, I intend to create uh, resources based off of college. And so there were gonna be a lot more opportunities, a lot more information that's gonna be coming your way. So please be sure, you know, check back on the CPD website. Um, we are here to support you. That's great. I have a question for you, Addison. Um, yeah. You were talking a little bit about, uh, you know, your experience with study abroad. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, did you go on more than one? Um, where did you go? Yes, you know, it's it's quite funny because um, I remember when I was in college, I had a friend and they said that after they graduated college, they were going to go travel. And I thought, my goodness, traveling is for the birds. And I don't know, I guess one day I woke up and I said, you know, I've never seen the ocean and maybe I should. And I, I went and I went to the study abroad fair and I ended up in Australia for about six months. And it was very interesting studying political science there. Uh, very, some different views. And I had just a really, really great experience there. And then post when I graduated from college that led me to teaching English in Spain for a year which was a very trying experience, but I learned about a lot about myself. And then while I was in graduate school, I taught an intercultural competency course in Guatemala. And so um, you never know where these things might lead you. 
And I think that all of them have really solidified just helping other people, whether it's through career development and transitions and, and things of that nature. So it's funny how these experiences, you never know the people that you might meet, as well as the skills that you might gain, and just, I think, more clarity when it comes to what you really, really enjoy. And I love that. Speaking. Everybody just posted in the chat that there are so many options in this presentation that I can't wait to dig into all of these tonight. There is, this is a, a, a lot to take in, um, but there's lots of options out there for you to gain experience and to, you know, discover things that you might not know that you're good at. And the great thing about these opportunities, there's such a variety of them that, you know, volunteering might be great for somebody, Sim simulations might be great for somebody else. You know, you can experiment with a lot of different ones and find something that really fits you well. Absolutely. All right, I think we're ready to wrap up here. We just wanna make sure you know how to get in touch with us. Um, here's our email again that I noted at the beginning of the workshop. Here's our website. If you haven't been on the career and professional development website, we call it CPD. Um, we maybe have talked about that a few times today, but that's what we mean. Career and professional development is here. Do check us out. There are a lot of resources on there. Um, it's pretty dense. Uh, you might have fun going through that rabbit hole, but there's lots there to support you. We also have a, a message line. If you need to get in touch with us, if you have a quick question, um, about something, you can leave a message here and a career advisor will call you back within four hours as long as you leave a message by 2 p.m. Mountain. Otherwise, we'll get back to you the next business day. And we're also on Facebook and LinkedIn. Again, uh, just as a reminder, we have recorded this session. We'll be sending that out. Sometimes it takes a little while for the recording to get processed, but look for that in your inbox. We will be including the links that we shared today. Of course, you can you know check in with us if you um, you know, have additional questions. And uh, and Addison uh, also mentioned that she would be following up at a later date when that internships, um, a gaining experience internships guide is, is done. Um, and so we'll be sharing that with you. So that might be a couple of weeks or more. It might be a little bit ways down the road because it's going through, you know, proofing processes and all those kinds of things. Um, so keep your eyes open for that. That should be coming fairly soon. Um, so there's a comment in the chat that says, I haven't seen any recordings from the past live events I attended. Um, it, we do pull the registration list. So everybody that's registered for this automatically is set to get that email. There was a period of time, I don't know, a couple months ago, where this all those emails go through Handshake. There was a period of time where Handshake was having some glitches and those got backed up. Um, but it should be coming potentially later today, um, um, certainly before the weekend, um, unless there's a technical problem, but we'd let you know about that. And I also just popped in the chat our YouTube channel because um, there's a lot of really great content that you can watch and they're mostly pre-recorded from, you know, webinars that we have. Um, so feel free to check that out. I'm gonna pop in the chat here, uh, the link for a survey that we'd love to hear from you to, to hear about you know your experience here or if you have any suggestions on any webinars that um, you know you'd like to see us bring to you. Yeah, your feedback is really helpful for us to know that we're on the right track with these kinds of things. So we'd love to hear what your experience was in this workshop today. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is a new workshop and we want to you know continue to improve it. So your feedback is we appreciate your partnership and sharing, you know, um, what your experience has been here today. All right. Absolutely. If there's any other ideas you have um, for things that you'd like to learn about, please do let me know so we can continue to, to add to those as well. So thank you, Dorothy. Thank you, Christy. Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you for your participation and engagement and looking forward to doing more about this in the future. And thank you, Addison. We are so thrilled to have you here at WGU and we're looking forward to lots of great gaining experience um, uh, opportunities and resources coming. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Thank you. Take care. We hope you have a great day.